Sharing the split screen with me is a PowerPoint titled ADA Website Compliance Training. It is for my ADA compliance course. You will find nothing even remotely close to my course in the market. And in this PowerPoint presentation, I will explain why. So first, let's start off with the objectives for the buyer. This is the buyer I have designed this course for. Um, first of all, your primary concern is preventing litigation. You also, um, as sub bullets underneath that, you want to save money, and that includes um, settlement costs, any costs from potentially settling a claim, um, hiring a defense attorney, and then also potentially um, saving money on an audit and remediation. So many people cannot afford an audit and or remediation that can cost several thousands of dollars, if not into the five figures. And so this is um, this is something that will help you um, while you work towards full WCAG conformance. And then you will save time and energy because you do not have to deal with litigation. So you will also improve accessibility. So as um, something that uh, some buyers are genuinely looking for a way to improve their accessibility and to ensure better access um, to all of their users. This course will help with that and it will remove potential barriers to access. So on this next slide, I have a screenshot of me. It's, it's a video, it's a YouTube video and it's of me and I'm pointing to the whiteboard and this is for a the closed captions lesson. And so this is just to demonstrate that all of my lessons have um, video uh, explanations of what is going on along with text instructions. So there is um, some overlap on, and, and then that's on purpose to help you learn and absorb the material, but the videos and the text aren't exactly the same. I don't just repeat what is in the text. I also um, provide more context and really explain the lesson so that each person going through has a better understanding of what the material is. And the videos are not long and that is by design. I don't want someone to take any longer than is necessary to begin remediating their website um, to improve the accessibility and lower their risk of litigation. So what were the objectives as I created the course? Well, one, I wanted to make everything easy to understand. I also wanted to make it as simple as possible. Some of these lessons are not um, are not that simple, but whatever the material was, I wanted to make it as obvious and as clear as possible so that someone can take action on it. And I've also made everything direct and to the point. There is no reason to have these long introductions to explain everything about disability and accessibility and assistive technology the point of this course is to reduce risk of litigation through genuine accessibility. And I've made that an emphasis and I've and everything in this course is direct and to the point. It is this course is not designed for full WCAG conformance. Rather, it is designed to remediate your website for the most commonly claimed uh, accessibility issues in litigation. Now, by doing so, you will conform with many WCAG success criteria, but that is not the point of this course. I don't want the, I didn't want the course to be overly broad and expansive and to take up too much time and to sidetrack the, um, the, the course members into accessibility issues that are not commonly being claimed in litigation and it would take up valuable time and resources on those issues. That's not to say that other issues aren't important, but first, we need to prevent litigation to ensure that we don't have thousands of dollars going to plaintiff's law firms and instead rather save that money, save that time and energy and just make our website accessible and then continue on with full WCAG conformance later. So the course was also designed to take action as you go. So I want anybody to be able to log in and to start taking action immediately. So the idea is that website owners could give this course to their developer and tell the developer, here are the instructions, follow these instructions. And that's my next bullet point. This course is designed as an SOP or step-by-step -step instructions for website owners. Now, if you're a solo entrepreneur, that might mean that might mean that you, the website owner, are going through this course and doing what you can and then later hiring um, someone to help you uh, with the more advanced material. 
that that's also that was also considered as I made made this course. But either way, no no matter whether you're a small business, a solo entrepreneur, medium sized business, or a large multinational cor corporation, I've designed this course as step by step instructions that you can go through. So how how do I accomplish this? Well. I train your web team. And again, it might just be you. It might be you and a developer. It could be a team of, of designers, developers, and content managers. But whatever the case is, I train your web team on the most commonly claimed issues in litigation. And then the training includes how to find these issues and then how to fix them. So who is this course designed for? It's well, it's designed for your web team, whoever that may be. So ideally, um, in fact, essentially, there must be a developer because the developer will be in charge of code remediation. And ideally, there will also be a content manager because it would be a rate of um, inefficient allocation of resources for a developer to be handling all of the work and especially the work that is uh, non-technical. So adding closed captions, um, possibly even adding alt text descriptions, that's not really uh, efficient for a, a, a web developer to be working on. You want the web developer to be working on code. Um, but either way, this course is designed for your web team and it may also include a designer. So there may be design implications. In fact, there are some design implications. So in that case, if you have a designer, you may have your designer working on those as well. And it may just be the website owner and a freelance developer. Either way, this course is designed for whoever is working on your website to be able to take action right away. So there are 15 lessons in this course, and those lessons are comprised of, each lesson is, com is comprised of an accessibility issue. Now there are a few more lessons that help explain strategy, um, and they provide supplemental material, and they explain, for example, um, an automated scan to use. There are all those lessons too, but primarily this course consists of 15 lessons which each involve an accessibility issue. They are prioritized by urgency. And these lessons, these access, the accessibility issues that comprise these lessons are all accessibility issues that have been claimed in uh, complaints by plaintiff's law firms. Also, they are these lessons are connected to one or more WCAG success criteria. So for some of the lessons, multiple WCAG success criteria are implemented. So this is to say there is real and genuine accessibility work being done as you go through this course. This is an investment in accessibility. This is training in accessibility, but the accessibility is focused in on those issues that are commonly claimed in litigation. Um, the, the lessons are also comprised of a video explanation. So there will be a video for each uh, lesson with me explaining the lesson. And there are also text instructions and then I have included multiple code examples so that your developer, your designer, your content uh, editor, your content manager, whoever is working on the lesson will have better context and a better understanding of what exactly needs to be changed. Most code examples are going to be for the developer, but there could be instances where a content editor or a designer is working and the code examples will help them as well. So this course, is very um, precise and aligned with what is actually in litigation. And the reason I know that is because the issues that comprise this course, the accessibility issues that are, that are in this course are the same accessibility issues that are claimed by plaintiff's law firms, including the most active plaintiff's law firms. So on this next slide, I have a list of plaintiff's law firms. There's Mars Kamoff. There's Pacific Trial Attorneys, there's Gottlieb and Associates, there's Stein Sachs, there's the Law Office of Paleo Duran, there's Manning Law, there's Asasia Barros, there's J. Courtney Cunningham, and the list goes on. I've got more plaintiff's law firms on, uh, on the course description itself, but the point is I have looked through the complaints filed by these law firms. I know what these plaintiff's law firms are looking for and claiming in actual litigation. These claims have been incorporated into this course. That's how you can be so confident that this course is going to reduce your risk of litigation. It is aligned precisely with litigation. So the course features include, there, there's a remediation strategy. Each lesson has a role assigned to it. So um, you know ahead of time 
okay, is this, is this for a developer or is this for a content editor or can it be both? Who should be in charge of this lesson? There is a, a level assigned to each lesson. So um, is this le does this lesson have um, not more non-technical uh, implications? If so, it'd be a beginner. If it's slightly technical, it'd be intermediate. And if it's advanced, it'd be for a developer or designer. But you will know just by going into each lesson what the level of complexity is for each lesson. You will also know whether wave flags the issues in the lesson or not. So you will know, do, if I run a wave scan, will wave flag some or most of this accessibility issue with uh, with the scan? So you will, ha you will have the ability to know, okay, can we use wave and can wave help us in this instance? Yes or no. You will also have a pay, there is a pay attention to uh, section for each lesson. And in this pay attention to, what I draw your attention to are common um, common issues that arise or where the issues arise or what to look out for, um, what, um, what, what, where to draw your focus in on where issues reside on your website. That pay attention to uh, for each lesson can really help um, draw in focus where it is most needed. So the course also has supplements. There's an Excel spreadsheet checklist which contains many of the features that I just talked about. So for example, each, each lesson is going to be contained in the Excel spreadsheet. And then I'm also going to tell you um, within the accessibility lesson, okay, what is the role assigned to this lesson? Is it developer, content editor, designer? Um, also, I will tell you whether WAVE uh, can flag an issue or not. This is all going to be in the Excel spreadsheet. So. Even after you go through all of the lessons, you're going to have a, a, a checklist that you can go through on Excel and mark completed or not completed. That will be there for you. There are also PDF cheat, cheat sheets where I go through some of the more important concepts and distill them down into a one page, um, a one page information sheet. There will also be the ability, you will also have the ability to read claims from the actual complaints filed in court so that you can see for yourself, you don't have to take my word for it. What are the claims that are actually being made in these complaints that are filed? And then you, there are also linked resources for additional help. Should you need additional instruction, there will be linked resources. One of my primary resources is the Mozilla Developer Network. That will be there for you. So if your developer has questions on how on, on some of the foundational knowledge, if, if they need something to um, help supplement them as they go through the lessons, they will have these resources. And there will also be an email support add-on that is only available if you are a member and purchase the course. And this support is available a la carte and it is at a discounted rate. So on this next slide, I've got a screenshot um, and this screenshot is only meant to show that um, it, it's a screenshot of an actual complaint filed in court. It's a class action complaint. And this is just to um, illustrate that I have taken um, claims that are actually being made in complaints filed in court. So in this next slide, it, the course is designed for action, to, to take action. The first bullet point, to get started right now. This can be for a multinational corporation or a solo entrepreneur. If you have a website and you want to improve the accessibility and you want to reduce your risk of litigation, this that is who this course is designed for. Any, it, it doesn't matter whether you're small or large. And even if you're just a solo entrepreneur and you don't have development experience, so you can't go get through all of the lessons, you can still get through some of the lessons by sorting through the beginner, uh, by, by looking through the lessons and, and selecting the beginner lessons to get started. So you can make progress even as a website owner who is a solo entrepreneur without development experience. And you can give your login to your web developer. So if you do hire a freelancer or if your web developer is part of a larger team that is in-house, you can give your login to that web developer and tell them get started. Hey, follow the instructions on this course, read through it and work through it as you go. Um, and this course is designed for you to take action as you are learning about the diff different accessibility issues. There is no reason um, for us to make this any longer of a process than it needs to. And that's why I have designed each lesson to be actionable in and of itself. You do not have to finish the, 
the entire course to start um, remediating issues and lowering your risk of litigation. And that's my next bullet point. You will lower your risk of litigation as you go through the course. The more accessibility issues that you find and remediate, the lower your risk of litigation is going to be. And so who created this course? It's it's myself. My name is Chris Rivenberg. I am an attorney. I am the author of the ADA book, uh, which you can find on Amazon. I'm the founder of accessible.org. So I offer accessibility uh, services myself. So including an audit audits and remediation. Uh, I am the creator of uh, my own WCAG 2.1 and 2.2 guides and checklists and you can find those on accessible.org and i have five years experience in this space so in ada website compliance i have five years of experience in working with all sorts of clients including small and medium-sized businesses and large corporations and so this next slide um it's just a, a screenshot of the amazon listing for the ada book um, the title of the book is The ADA Book, ADA Compliance for Websites, Apps, and Other Digital Assets. Um, it's got seven reviews. Uh, right now, the average rating is 4.3 stars. But the point is, is that I have written the book on ADA compliance for websites, apps, and other digital assets. Um, if you would like to find out more about the course, um, go to adacompliance.net. That is where you can buy the course. Also, if you would like to get a better feel for the information and um, uh, the, the educational material that I provide, you can go to youtube.com slash at ADA book.